Emile Durkheim and the distinction between mechanical and organic solidarity. We're going to begin by differentiating social structure from culture by using the analogy of a computer network. Think of social structure as a computer network. Think of traditional social structure as a small computer network, just a handful of old basic computers linked together in a small system. Think of modern society as the internet. Millions and millions and millions of computers hooked together in a global system of exchange. Traditional social structure is like a very small computer network, modern social structure like the internet. Think of culture then as the software that runs on these networks. In the same way that an old computer will crash when new software is loaded on it, so too does traditional society crash when modern culture touches it. Traditional societies are structured to reproduce themselves over time in a rotary motion, cyclical events, a repetition uh, over time. Modern society um, has an internal dynamism to it. Uh, normal change is associated with modernity. The economic organization of traditional societies is production for local use, direct production for local use for subsistence needs in the community. Modern society has an industrial capitalist market system where people do not produce for their own needs but instead produce for other people's needs, thus requiring them to meet all of their own needs through the purchase of items on the market. Uh, modern people are vulnerable in ways that traditional people aren't because we require other people to meet our basic physical needs. Emile Durkheim theorized the difference between traditional and modern society in terms of social solidarity. Social solidarity is literally the thing that makes solid. It is the glue that holds society together. Traditional society is literally held together with a different social glue than modern society. Thus, traditional society represents a different species of society than modern society does. Traditional societies are held together with mechanical solidarity. Mechanical solidarity is defined as a collective consciousness or collective conscience, a sort of group mind that is shared among all of the members of society and which binds them together into a moral community. At the center of mechanical solidarity is a sacred collective type, uh, sometimes an individual or a mythic animal or a hero figure, a god, man, or spirit that represents the virtues of the group and serves as a source of identity for those within the group. Bonded group usually are engaged in parallel production. They all do the same job side by side. Hence, people can be held together by a single shared ethos, a one right way to live that is often reinforced by ritual and taboo. There is an absolute restriction on innovation and individuality in mechanically bonded groups. What matters more than anything is that the sacred way of the group, the one right way to live, be reproduced over time unchanged. Hence, deviation, deviance, is viewed as sinful and as something that must be punished, restricted, and conformity must be enforced. Ritual is essential to the maintenance of mechanical solidarity. Um, rituals allow for the group to visibly and physically experience the power of the group over the self. The most powerful rituals are those that enact the ritual punishment of deviance. Nothing is more powerful than a group of people coming together to kill one of its own members over the deviance of, from group norms. The ritual punishment of deviance helps the group to define its moral boundaries, its one right way to live, and helps the group uh, stay together. So as we're looking at these images now, what you're going to see are groups of people who are acting in unison or acting in, in stereotype forms together out of shared belief. The group behavior is dominated by conformity to a shared belief. So ritual behavior is the quintessential mechanically bonded activity. People acting together, reproducing the ritual, reproducing the mythic structure of the group, affirming the existence of the collective type. Emile Durkheim divides consciousness up into two categories. Collective consciousness represents the shared beliefs of the group. Individual consciousness represents the part of the mind that is devoted to uh, individuality, individual pursuits, individual self-management. In mechanically bonded 
uh, societies, collective consciousness dominates individual consciousness. A person thinks of him or herself primarily as a part of the group rather than as an individual. Members of the group in a mechanically bonded society have the same dreams, have the same fears, have the same hopes, often grieve together, often celebrate together. There is a collective consciousness to the group. Let's briefly talk about modernity. In organically bonded modernity, there's a division of labor that exists. And it is that division of labor and specialization which separates people, which creates a kind of individual experience of the day that wasn't possible in mechanically, or that wasn't prevalent in mechanically bonded groups. As people begin to divide their labor up and to specialize, the collective type cannot hold. One of the primary reasons why mechanical solidarity cannot continue to exist in modernity is the experience of sacrilege that goes unpunished. Other people commit sacrilege against their most cherished ideals with no negative consequence. It undermines the power of the group's belief in a shared uh, type and uh, encourages a kind of individualization. So as people become more individual then, a new kind of bond emerges. It is organic bonding, the desperate need that people have for the work of others that creates a kind of social space for individual freedom. Modernity depends upon a division of labor and a specialization of function, which means that individuals must act throughout their day without the group around them and in ways that are individually directed. It causes the individual consciousness to grow and the collective consciousness to shrink. So what holds people together if they no longer have shared belief? Durkheim argues that the center of modernity's social bond is organic solidarity, which he defines as really the re desperate reciprocal need that we have for each other's labor. Since we all specialize, we depend upon other people to meet our needs. And this reality that, we, that none of us can survive without other people's contribution is the bonding force of the, of, of the modern world. Now, organic solidarity is something that isn't consciously experienced by many modern people. We actually go out of our way to suppress the vulnerability that we face every day, and we suppress the dependence that we have upon other people to meet our needs. Modern people, to a far greater extent than traditional people, feel themselves to be captains of their fate and individuals who are Durkheim claims that the lack of awareness of organic solidarity contributes to anomie in modern society and find as the inability to name experience or to find norms or rules to govern conduct. Durkheim actually designed a school system in France that would teach sociology in order to make people aware of organic bonding and the structure of the modern world.